We are here with my mom, Grandmaster Pia Kramling, who was one of the first women in the world to become a chess grandmaster, also former number one ranked woman in the world, has had a peak of 2550, and today at the age of 61, she has a rating of 2429. Mom, I'm so happy to be interviewing you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm so happy to be here with you. <laughs> it feels surreal in a way. Um, we're sitting here in Svartahesten, which is the place where the match against Gotham Chess is going to take place in a few days. How are you feeling about the match? I, I feel very excited and also, of course, a bit nervous. To play a match is just very different than to play in a tournament because whatever I will do, I will face. I know the pairing, but I will also know that I will face the same players uh, every day. So it, it's going to be very exciting. I am um, very experienced playing. I've played a lot of, uh, lot of years. And, but Gotham, he's much younger. He's even less than half of my age. So he has more energy. And so it's going to be very exciting. I guess it's going to be quite tough also because we are playing different formats. And, uh, but that is just how it works like this way, that, uh, these times now that is normal. We play classical, but also we will play rapid and blitz. So, but I am excited, and it's also, um, I haven't played so many matches during the years, even if I've been playing for a very long time. And uh, so that will be, it will be very, very exciting. It will be really, um, uh, yeah, really looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And I was going to ask you, we are going to be having different formats. So we're going to be doing a mix of classical chess, rapid and blitz so it's truly going to be a match where all different time controls are getting tested which time control are you happiest about and which one do you think is going to be the toughest yeah i always been a slow player i like to use my time I'm so cool <laughs> yeah. and i think i got it from you <laughs> i think so yes so i i will of course like like it more when we have longer games. Classical, rapid, I will also, uh, I'm not that worried about, but the blitz, yeah, that will be absolutely the toughest part uh, because I am a player who, who likes to use my time. Even though you're saying that you are very slow and that uh, you don't feel so comfortable with blitz, I need to remind everybody about the fact that you actually finished fifth in the world uh, blitz well, Women's Championship, a few years ago, I, I believe it was 2017, am I correct? Uh, yeah, I think it was the, yes, 2017. You finished fifth, and not only did you finish fifth, you were leading for such a long time. I remember getting a text from my, from my half-brother, and he said, Anna, what is going on with Pia? And I thought, oh no, poor mom, <laughs> it hasn't gone so well, you know, she's fighting. And I look at the standings, and after day one, it's a two-day format. After day one, you are leading the world's woman chess championship. I mean, I was like, this is crazy. Like, mom, you are just beating everybody. So I think that even though, in general, like you're saying, you're a bit slower, you definitely have that capacity to play really good blitz if you get in the flow. Is there anything specific you think you need to do to be able to get into that flow this match? Um, yeah, of course. I will need to try to steer the games towards position I like, absolutely. And of course, I will need to take the decisions quicker. Uh, but in general, it's very important to get the kind of positions I am happy about. That is very, mm. very important. And of course, I remember 2017. That was really a dream tournament for me. Uh, I, I don't know. I played against all the top players, and it just went my way for a very long time. But I, uh, in the end, I was a little bit collapsing but it was yeah it was wonderful and I was also very happy uh, because it gave me confidence that even with short time control if I get into my flow if I can be my best Pia then I can also uh, play well there you mm. can absolutely do that and I'm, I'm, I'm so looking forward to the match I mean we're gonna be sitting here in just a few days um, you're playing against Gotham Chess, against Levy Rossman. Mm. How have your preparations against him gone, and what is your impression of him? Um, uh, he's a very, of course, he's, he's, he's a very young player for me, but he is, um, he's playing very exciting chess, and uh, yeah, it's very nice to see his games. He has also very special openings, you know, he has some very favorite openings which are not so common, and, uh, and he's also very wide with a lot of different openings. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, so he likes to be active. He likes he's playing much more actively than I do. He's very creative, I would say, uh, and I'm more uh, like a more a solid player. Uh, so it's yeah, it's I, I think it's it's not only two different generations who are playing against each other. I think it's also the different style we have. So that will be very exciting to see how I will manage to cope with that. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And have you been preparing a lot? How has it been these past few days? Yeah, yeah. No, I've been, of course, I've been preparing. I need to do that, of course. If it will be enough, I will know whether I'm playing the match or not. <laughs> yeah, we will not leak any preparation, though. We will. That will be for the match. Uh, but I thought, you know, you've had such a long career. Mm. I mean, you're 61 years old right now, which I find it amazing, I mean, in general, not just as your daughter, but I find it amazing that you're playing chess at this age, especially with the fact that so many people, when they become a bit older, they decide to retire. They don't want to continue playing chess because they feel like um, it, it, they're under their peak and they don't want to play worse chess. How do you feel your chess is today in comparison to what your peak was when you were uh, rated 25-50? Uh, of course, you know, you can't take away age. It, it, it's the, the problem with age is actually you don't have the same energy and before. Uh, decision came a little bit slower. Uh, everything became a little bit uh, worse. It, it's just like that. And you can see that with anyone, also with me, uh, that the peak rating is not now, it's much earlier. This is what happened uh, with age. We are, yes, becoming a weaker play than we were before. So what I'm trying to do is, of course, uh, chess is my passion. Otherwise, I wouldn't be playing so so long time, and uh, just to keep the happiness for chess. That's very very important. Mm. To keep uh, looking really forward to playing the games, to fight and try to do my best. And I really try to be my best at my age now. I cannot be the my best ever because I am sure my, my peak has been in the past, but I can try to be as strong as possible in my age, Pia at 61, and this is a little bit my goal and uh, to see how much, how I will manage with that. And I asked, um, uh, because there are other players I can see who are older than me, they are keep on playing, they can keep on making good results. And But I just have to realize that uh, sometimes it will go my way, but not always, and I just have to keep on fighting. And that is uh, that I'm not as strong as when I was stronger, but I will still keep on trying. And that is so inspirational. I think you inspire so many people. I mean, including me, but you know, I, I think it inspires so many people with the fact that you keep on playing and that you show it's okay to keep on playing even if you don't feel like you're at your peak. Chess is a game that you love and that is why you want to keep on playing it. And you're obviously still doing it at such a high level. You won a gold medal at the Chess Olympiad Board 1 just two years ago, which is insane. I mean, we're going to talk now a little bit about your career and how everything started and what your journey has been. but. The fact that you won two gold medals in the 80s, mm. and then 40 years later, you win your third gold medal at the Chess Olympiad. Mm. I think that that is incredible. There's very few sports, if any other sport, where something like that can happen. So, you know, obviously I know your whole story because <laughs> you're my mom, but I thought it would be really nice for you to tell everyone how did you start playing chess and what was your journey towards becoming the player that you became? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, um, it all started with my brother, with your uncle, Don. I have a brother who is four years older, who was my role model when I was a kid. So everything he did, I wanted to, to do also. He was the only, I have only one brother. So it was a lot of typical uh, things boys were doing. I was playing football. I was even in a team uh, for some years. Uh, we, we played the pingies at home. We had a lot of board games we were playing, so we a lot about about competing, about winning. I, I, I love to win, I hate to lose. And we also had, uh, um, um, we also had chess, of course, but I, uh, at home, and my brother, he was taught chess by our father, Inge. And, but then, when my father also wanted to teach me, I just said, no, no, not chess, it's too boring. But I play on the other side of the board. We had another game there. I don't know the word in English, in Swedish it was uh, Kvarnspiel, and that I liked very, very much. 
And uh, so what happened is that um, 1973, when I was 10, there was a chess club started in our, na our neighborhood. His name was uh, Svenig Petersson. It was, uh, he loved chess. He came to live in Huddinge and he realized there was no chess club there. And uh, uh, so he started a chess club. And my brother, who used to play with our father, he also played with a neighbor. He went there from the first day and he has loved it. And so he came home and he told me, you know, there's chess club, Pia, you should go there. But I said, no, 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 not that. I, I don't want to do it. But after half a year, uh, the chess club started in the spring, in March, um, 73, I believe it was. So thinking of the whole summer, my brother told me, you must go there. So I decided first day in the autumn, I should go there and to see how it is, to give it a chance. So I went there in the autumn, I guess it was the uh, beginning of September. And uh, then Sven Eriks Petition, he sat with me. I didn't know how to move the pieces. I didn't know anything because I always said no about chess. I always thought it was so boring. It took <laughs> so long time when they were playing at home. But Sven Eriks sat with me and he's a fantastic person. He's very, he's like an um, uh, actor actually. So <laughs> he, it was like magic for me. He was sitting there showing me the pieces, how they were moving. I didn't know anything. Mm -hmm. He make it like a fairy tale, like a story. So for the first, from the very first day, I just loved chess, and I didn't know anything before mm. that. So I I started to go to the club, and the first year it didn't go very quickly. It went quite slowly. It took time to get to understand how this. Oh, mom, you were ten years old. I mean, it doesn't have to go quickly all the way from when you're ten. No, no, no. Of course not. Yeah, but yeah. then it didn't, and we. Uh, so it took time. And then um, uh, I, I just kept on uh, playing the club. Uh, the club was growing, so I went also um, to when the club had activities in other places in Huddinge. So they had their different chess in different schools. So I was quite active. And when I was 12, I started to win some smaller tournaments. Also, uh, the club even organized tournament for me, even organized a woman tournament where we were four ladies, two young uh, girls and mm. two older ladies just playing against each other. And uh, so uh, the club was supporting a lot. But then I could see, yeah, I was doing well. And then in uh, 76, um, the club decided to organize a tournament, which is very important in Sweden. It was the Swedish school championship. It's only held during the weekend, but the club organized it in, in, um, in a school in, in Sweden. It was close to 500 children coming, and we're playing in age groups. So I was playing with kids at 13 and 14. Mm -hmm. I was 13, and we were, I think we were a little more than 100 in the group, and we were only two girls, actually. And the, the other girl, we, we actually became friends a little bit before. Her name is C. Bengtsson. She was much stronger than me, so she was one of the favorite to win uh, our, our this uh, tournament for our age. My brother played in a B group, and what happened was that my brother, he won his group. He was one of the favorites. And of course, for the club, that was fantastic. But the surprising was that uh, I won my group. And the last round, I'm actually playing, if I don't remember, uh, I, play, I played with Sieve. So we were having like a final. Uh, she was absolutely mm. the favorite. She was also having good opening. But it turned to uh, changed. And I won that game. And uh, I won my group. And uh, so I remember uh, the prize was a chess clock. I believe I have it at home still. We both got wow. our chess clock. And when I went to get the chess club, I told myself, I, I will play chess in one way or another my whole life. It meant so much to win uh, this tournament. Uh, so uh, 82, I became international master. And uh, a little bit later, I played a tournament in uh, Zurich, and there I got to meet your father. So after that, he came. Uh, he was my second in the tournament, and uh, later we, be, we got together. I Wait, mom, 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 you're skipping a lot here. So what happened? There's, I know that there's a really fun story from that tournament. Can you please tell me the story, the Korchnoi story? Yeah, okay. Because so, I think it's a very sweet story. Yeah, I, okay, yeah, yeah, of course. So uh, when I, um, 
Uh, when I went to play in series, the first day mm -hmm. your father is coming up to me, and actually he remembered me from my first time in Broad and Vacancy, uh, because I also remember him, he was the one painting the score sheet, so that was a very special memory about your father. And he came up to me and he has told me an anecdote, he was in the opening ceremony, he said that when he plays an open tournament, uh, a tournament where you have more, um, you have more players than rounds, so you, it's not a round robin, you don't play against everyone. He always win the first round, but he was going to play against Kochner next day. So he was sure that his record would just, you know, go uh, with a win. He would just lose his record. And yeah, so the next day he was playing against Kochner and he actually beat Kochner. So he kept his record. And that was just so, so very beautiful. But this was actually the first time I spoke with him. When and he so then he said that you were his lucky charm. That is the part of the story that we're missing. Yeah. So he, I remember him saying this, that after he was able to beat Korchnoi, who was at that time one of the absolute best chess players in the world, right? I mean, he was number two. He was number two, two in the world. world. Yes. And for him, for my dad to beat the number two in the world was something that he thought was almost impossible. But after he told you and you kind of told him that, oh, you can do this, he did, and then he thought, okay, Pia has to be my lucky charm. So yeah, I just wanted to say that. You can continue. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, so but there's how I, 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 I got to know uh, your father. And then a little bit later, I had to make a decision what to do with my life. And uh, I decided that I wanted to play chess. So I went to Spain uh, to, lead, to, to play chess, to play tournament. And uh, so we were traveling around, playing lots of tournaments in Spain, sometimes going abroad. And that was just a wonderful time. It was so many tournaments. Uh, it was the possibility to make a living from playing chess. And yes, allowed it to travel around, mm. getting to know Spain. And later on, uh, very much thanks to uh, Juan, uh, uh, your father, Juan Beyond, that um, he helped me with training, helped me lots with opening. I switched from E4 to D4. I was playing E4 and C4 before because of my brother. I played openings he mm. played, and now I was good, started to play the openings uh, the that, uh, that your yeah. dad is playing, yes. And how much did that change? Like, was my father a big reason that you wanted to continue with chess? Uh, I think, yeah, absolutely. He mm. was uh, he was a must reason. I, it would not have been possible for me doing only chess without Juan, mm. without going to Spain. I would say, if I stayed in Sweden, I would like I would have done like my brother, like all the other juniors in Sweden do, did, uh, and that is to have you have chess as a hobby and you have a pro, you have a proper uh, proper work yeah. so hmm. and if we go back then to the 80s which is the time we were mm -hmm. talking about this was a very uh, different time because you were a woman uh, that was trying to make a living out of chess but at that time there were very few women that that did that and there were only two women I believe at that time right that were that were grandmasters so you I suppose at that point had the goal of wanting to become a grandmaster but almost no other woman in the world had done that. How did you feel then? Did you feel that it didn't matter? You're gonna become a grandmaster anyways, you have that strength, or did it make it in any way feel like it was something very difficult to achieve? Uh, I always thought it was very difficult to become a grandmaster, and, but it always was my goal. That was the most important to me because I was brought up in Sweden where I always, almost always played with the boys. We always played all the championships together and, uh, uh, and I have tried to beat them. So, so for me, trying to, uh, to become a woman world champion was not so important. It was important to become a grandmaster. That was really mm. my, uh, my goal. And, uh, and of course, uh, I knew there was not so many women who was grandmas, but there was not so many places at all in Sweden who were grandmasters mm -hmm. at that time. So, um, but thanks to uh, uh, that I could keep on playing chess together with your father. Uh, he helped me so much with training, with everything. Uh, I could see that that was possible uh, to, to achieve. Mm. And that was, that was really what was most important to me, really. And I think that is different for me than for lots of other women who became grandmasters after me, that for most of them uh, becoming, uh, making good results in the Women World Championship was what they felt was most important. But with my background, 
I, I never felt that the woman chess was the main thing. I felt that the chess we all played together was the main thing. So I wanted to become an international master. Uh, and at the, when I became that at the same time, I became a woman grandmaster because mm. it, it's, it's easier. And then after that, of course, I wanted to become a grandmaster. And what year did you become an international master? Uh, 82. 82. And yeah. then you ended up becoming a grandmaster in 92. So that was 10 years. Yeah, I think it was 82, 83. I'm a little bit unsure. It doesn't matter. Uh, 82, 83. So yeah. you were 20, 21 years old mm -hmm. when you became that. And then it would take you 10 more years to become a grandmaster. And it was during this time that also uh, the rise of the Polgar sisters mm -hmm. started, right? So. Yeah. Susan, uh, Judith, I mean, you, you can talk about it, but how was that kind of competition with becoming you know, the third ever woman to become a grandmaster? Yeah, it became a competition. <laughs> uh, oh. Uh, to become uh, to become a grandma, to become the third one, and also to become the one who will make it in open tournaments, because I believe that both Nona Gabrina Shvili and Maya Chibonecha, who were the grandmas at that mm. time, uh, they got uh, their norms by winning the women world championship, yeah. which they achieved lots of times. They were very, uh, yeah, they, they, they did lots of times. So that became a competition between us. And I think for me, uh, it would have been better that we didn't have this competition because mm -hmm. I, I, I made my first norm 89. And I think it was before you didn't make any of the norms, but I believe Sousa had her first norm before that. Um, but it took then three years to make the last one. And the last one I was missing. I was getting close, but I was getting so nervous all the time. And uh, yeah, I would have preferred not maybe to have this competition. Yeah. But I was anyway very happy when I got it as the fifth woman. So Zusa became first of us this competition, then Judith, and, and then I finally, when they have got it, yeah, I made my last Then you didn't also. have to stress anymore. Because yeah. then you, so then you were the third woman in the world to get the Grandmaster title through open tournaments. Yeah, yeah. And at that time, yeah, through uh, in the open class, at that time we needed to have at least one closed uh, tournament. Yeah, through open, yeah, but through mm. open class, through playing with, you know, both men and women. Mm, absolutely. Yeah, that is, that is, it's so amazing. It's uh, very historical and I also just find that, yeah, just, just so fascinating that you did that during a time when there was nobody pretty much else doing it. Um, if we go back a little bit, you had some really famous games with Korchnoi mm -hmm. in the beginning of the 80s. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about them? Because I know how important they were in terms of the story of, wait, who's the Swedish girl that is just now playing one of the best chess players in the world and she's not losing, she's, <laughs> she's winning. You know, how, how was that? Yeah, the first time I played against him was in Lois Bank, 82. Mm -hmm. And actually after, um, first my brother was my role model, but after that, I was very much looking up to Koshnai. Mm -hmm. He was a little bit my hero, I played his openings and everything. And there in Lois Bank, I got to play against him for the first time. So that was just yes, so amazing. And you know, after fifth move, I played his D4 in the, in the Spanish. Okay, I played something a little bit unusual. He for more than an hour <laughs> and uh, that was wow I'm playing against my hero he's thinking for more than an hour we are playing up on the stage because it was yeah. the top board he was the highest rated I believe yeah he was the highest rated in the tournament and uh, yeah and he's using so much time oh I have to think is this really real or yeah, you're dreaming? pinching yourself is this real yeah actually and then in the end uh, this game was a draw I had uh, and what happened after the game caution he was sitting there analyzing the game it was lots of people gathering around the board, and uh, and I had an easy win, which I had uh, I, I didn't see because we had when we had time travel. But it was a draw, and I was so happy. And he was very kind, analyzing with me with all these plays around it also. So this is actually the game. It's the most memorable game I have in my life. The first game I played with Coach Nye. And then I, I played him later on. I played him two years later, 84, in Beale. That was a closed tournament. It was the A group. Um, 
and uh, there I think I played him in the second round. There actually I I beat him, and uh, he goes he got very upset, uh, but uh, but then I won against him. And I remember after what we went out for jogging. I couldn't believe I beat Coach <laughs> Not <laughs> this but, 21 year old girl yeah. beating. The number two in the world. Yeah, yeah, he was maybe not number two then. Maybe he was four or fifth. But he was he was playing these world ch championship matches, yeah. 81, 78. So then he was number two. But he was very, you know, really the one but of the, the best. But at that time, one of the best in the world. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. And that was, yeah, that was very, very amazing for it's me. It's amazing. Mm. It's, I, I, it's, it's so, so, so amazing. And I think that when people hear this, they think a lot about the Queen's Gambit, and they hear they think a lot about Beth Harmon and about um, well how chess was in that era and being one of the very few women competing against men in that era. Do you see yourself in any way in Beth Harmon, or at least in her story? Uh, a little bit, yes, a little bit, I, I do. Uh, I was thinking that, yeah, a little bit I do, uh, but I was more, uh, well, I, I, because I play always with boys, I felt stressed when I played against girls when I was young, only because I felt uh, that I have to win the game, so it was psychological more difficult for me, so I used to dress more like a boy, so in that sense I was not at all similar to Beth Harmon, who was more, she coming with all her dresses mm. and everything, but I was more trying to hide. Uh, to look like a boy, but um, these that when you are coming in, they see a girl, they expect you to be one of the playing on the lower boards. They don't expect that you are playing on the top mm. boards. Um, also, when I played my first Olympia, that is uh, with the, in the open class, this was 90, and when I wanted to enter the playing hall in the, for the open class, I said, no, 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 the woman you are playing over there, they didn't realize that there are some women playing also. In the yeah. in the teams for the open class, uh, so that that was very, of course, very very typical. I feel the atmosphere, of course, that that was similar. We had this in Germany. We had this all these clocks, yeah. everything. But uh, being lonely in the world, yeah, well, well, with a man, of course, I, I, yeah. I uh, that, that that was uh, the, the the same, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I also remember you telling me a story of how you would a lot of times write in your score sheets, P. Cramling instead of Pia Cramling, mm. so that if those games got published in newspapers, people wouldn't immediately think, oh, this was a woman that was playing it. They would just see it as any other game and not really notice it. Yeah, this was a little bit like I, I wanted to look like a boy. I also wanted them to. Uh, Exact me as a player, not as a female player. Yeah. And so this is why I decided to write just yes, peak rambling. I just took away, mm. uh, yeah, this, and I, I kept on doing it. <laughs> no, oh, you do it still? Still, I am the writer. I didn't know that. I still, I only write the first letter. Yeah, of, of both, or, or me and my opponent. It's the same yeah. for both. I, I still do that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they, I, I, and it's uh, because there were difference at, at that time. You know, with, with writing, we started on lower rate. First time I made my grandmaster norm in, in Genoa, they gave the norm to my brother. <laughs> what? Uh, I didn't yeah. know this. Yeah, they gave the result to my brother first. I have to complain and say, no, this is uh, this is actually my result. But I also want to say that first time my my, um, my brother has played against Kasparov at 76 in the Cadet World Championship. And in some places they think it was me who played, but it's my brother. So it's a little bit like 1-1. One, one. <laughs> <laughs> it's 1-1. One, one. <laughs> yeah, your brother. He ended up becoming an international master. So mm. the whole family is filled with chess players. And I mean, if we go a little bit further in time, mm. you ended up getting your peak rating mm. in uh, 95? Yeah, 95, 96. 95, yeah. 96. And yeah. then you got a peak of 2550? 2550, yeah, that was my peak, yeah. yeah. When I was younger, I told me if I don't get to 26, should I really keep on playing? But my peak rating was 2550. <laughs> And I have kept on playing. <laughs> and yeah, and for a long time. Um, and then you were in your 30s, but then in 2008, when you were 40, uh, 45, mm. you ended up getting also a very high rating, right? Was yeah. it 2550 again? Yeah, I think so. I think yeah. I got my uh, up to that again, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think so. And uh, yeah, it was when I, I was also playing the Women's World Championship, I, I, I get to the semi final. And so, yeah, once again, and I believe that uh, my coming back 
after chess has to do actually with you very, very much. <laughs> with you very much. Because we were traveling, playing all this tournament with almost always men uh, during lots of years. And uh, before uh, becoming a mother, I was actually a bit bored of chess, doing the same things. I really wanted to have a child. And so you came, that was <laughs> fantastic. And that's the best thing in the world to become a mother. And then I started to play again, and at that time they were also starting to have more women tournaments. Mm -hmm. So when you were one, two thousand three, I played in the um, in the European uh, Championship for women for the first time, and we were a group. We were six, seven ladies from Sweden going. Juan, your father, he was the second down for all this team, and uh, I won it. I won it, and that was wow. You know, there were so oh, 11 of my opponents, I only knew the face of one. There were so many young new girls coming. They were all well known players, but I didn't know who they no, were. No, you were busy uh, with getting me. I was <laughs> busy with that, that. And also, before, I hadn't played so much in women tennis. I didn't know yeah. so about, about these new players. And uh, uh, so that was a fantastic experience. And yeah, I just felt that after becoming a mother, uh, chess was not the most important to me. Chess has always been the most important to me my whole life until I became a mother when I got you. And then this was, I started to enjoy playing chess again. Uh, and I knew that if something goes wrong with the chess, the most important is, is being <laughs> a mother, to have you. So it made me a little more relaxed. Uh, with chess. I also discovered all these fantastic, beautiful play, uh, tournaments with, with women. Uh, so, so I started playing more tournaments with women. And I still, until today now, I like more to play tournaments where there are more women play. Yeah. But becoming a mother changed it for me. And I, so that's why I think uh, for lots of players, when you are female players, to becoming a mother, it can actually be very good for you also for your chest. You, you, you get to look at things in a different way. Mm. And, uh, and also in physical sports, you have seen that some um, who are competing, they can do very, very good results mm. after, after becoming a mother. That's, this is very sweet, Bob. I'm getting very, very, very happy. <laughs> yeah. But again, my second happiness for chess, becoming a mother, yeah. Mm. And how has chess been after that? Because, well, my earliest memories, they're traveling to chess tournaments with you and dad and just always seeing chess. It didn't matter if I was playing. I mean, I wasn't playing then. I was just sitting in a corner drawing with the arbiter and I would just read books and do drawings. And it was a very special childhood in that way, <laughs> um, filled with chess. How was that for you to travel with the family? Yeah, because we almost didn't have any choice. Sometimes uh, my father, your grandfather, was helping us, yeah. but he was not young, so he couldn't. So in some few tournaments, he had to carry you. But otherwise, you came with us. So you started to travel with us, with three months. <laughs> it started very, very early. And then you came with us all, all the time. And of course, it was tough in one way to bring you, but it was also very, very beautiful, because like that, we spent a lot of time together. Of course, you can follow focus on on the chess tournament when you are coming with us. But for me, the moment I sat at the board, um, sometimes a little bit felt like having vacation when I sit at the board because I can fully focus on chess. Because <laughs> you don't have to take care of me anymore. <laughs> I didn't have to you know, think of the other things because as a mother you, mother, you have to think a lot of things. You know. Was I an annoying kid? No, you were fantastic. <laughs> you were very, very calm. And lots of, you know, in the beginning, you were sitting in a, on, in a st in stroller, is that, yeah? S yeah. Uh, yeah, on the side. Like a stroller. Uh, yeah, yeah. You were sitting on the side uh, during these hours. Sometimes maybe you went up walking a little bit, but you were sitting there reading, painting, maybe sleeping. Uh, so you were fantastic, very, very calm, and very easy to have with you to the tournaments. I have to ask you, mm -hmm. did I ever start crying very loudly in a quiet playing hall? Not crying, but when we played the European Team Championship, uh, in, in Gothenburg, I think it was, was it 2005? I think you were free. Yeah, you were free. Then you were sitting in the playing hall, and when you wake up, 
uh, there was a little scream. It was a little bit like a surprise, <laughs> like this. But it was just very short. Um, but no, you, you very, very seldom cry. Did I, I, everyone turn around then to see uh, what is this thing doing? Why is there a <laughs> loud noise? Uh, I, I cannot say that because I was sitting, and but I heard it. Yeah, I heard it sometimes. <laughs> I don't know if you did it every day, but it happened. <laughs> okay. And then at that moment, your dad, he was the second. He had to take you away. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I apologize many years later. <laughs> yeah, but it was so lovely that it, it, it because at that time it wasn't, um, it was so unusual. It was still a few women playing, but it was very unusual to bring your child to tournaments. Um, there was, but everyone was trying to get help. So sometimes we got help from the arbiters. You was, as you said, mm. you were sitting together with them. Or sometimes, yeah, we, we organized babysitters during the game, or sometimes you were sitting uh, with us. And sometimes when I play rapid tournament, when very small, you were even sitting in my lap. But then it was with some smaller tournament where you I know, accepted. Mom, I think it is just amazing, the story of you growing up, not really liking chess, but then falling in love with it. And then after that, becoming extremely good at the age of 19, drawing Korchnoi. And then at the age of 21, being the number one ranked woman in the world. And then <laughs> the story continues with me sitting in your lap <laughs> when you're playing chess tournaments, like 20 years later. I, I think it's amazing. I think it's amazing. Um, if we jump a, li a little bit further, you've been playing chess tournaments you know, for, for so many years during my life, too. I remember following you playing the Women's World Chess Championship. I would sit at home and come after school and just look at mom playing chess. That was my routine. Where is mom in the world right now? Let me watch her game. That was basically um, what the life was. What is the thing that keeps you still playing chess at the age of 61 today? Ah, because chess is my passion. I, I, I do love chess. Mm. I, I, I do love the game itself uh, very, very much. Otherwise, I, I couldn't keep on playing. So um, when I uh, was a kid, my best result was sometimes when I was most relaxed, actually. So um, uh, yeah, so, so it's, just, uh, it's just a big passion. I, I really love uh, the, the game, even if I don't play for results mm. or anything. And uh, and besides, um, <laughs> no, no, um, and and of course, I always love to compete. I always love very mm. much to win. It, it's a part of it mm. when you are competing. So I've always been very com competitive. Uh, maybe uh, if you see me now, maybe you think not. But yes, I always been. I always love to win anything when I was a kid. It, everything, even when I went to school, all these um, exams we had, it was like uh, competing for me, mm. making a good note. It was like a competition. It was like, yeah, yeah. winning. So, uh, so that's why I kept on playing. Of course, living together with your father, we have someone at home also have the same passion. Like, it's you can as talk about chess as much as you want. Yeah, exactly. And doing it together, that means a lot. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have enjoyed it as much if I would have been alone. So I, I would just only keep on playing as long as I keep on this passion. I keep on loving it. And besides that, I also believe that chess is so good. You, it's so good. If you like chess, of course, the first is you have to enjoy chess. You cannot do doing it if you don't enjoy it. But I, I believe it gives so much uh, to mm. you. Uh, b both as an educational tool, but it's also a way of meeting people, a way of, um, it's, it's, a, it's a meeting place mm. um, where we meet uh, everyone. It doesn't matter age, background, or whatever, and that's so beautiful. And we really can see that when we compete in, in the open class, in open tournaments, we sit at the board. I, I see a name. Uh, I maybe don't, I don't know so much, but then we come to the board and I can play against anyone from any kind yeah. of country, from any country in the whole world. It's just so, so beautiful. Yeah, now chess is definitely its own language, and it's a place that connects people. And I think now also with how global chess has become, uh, with how much it has exploded on the internet, we have so many now new people that are getting to know the world of chess, that are getting to know the players from the present, the past. What do you think about this? You know, this, this is also very much what Lavi is it's doing and what I do. <laughs> mm -hmm. We both have YouTube channels. We're trying to bring in new people into chess, and we're showing chess maybe in a different way than how it was before. What do you think about that? 
Oh, I think it's fantastic. It's tremendous. I, I'm so happy to see how chess is growing, how it's played all over the world, and also how we can see that also uh, the number of women, girls is increasing. It's, I, I just do believe so much in chess uh, in all aspects. And of course, I'm very happy what you're doing because you really get people to know chess, people who otherwise have maybe not got connected to chess. They don't know so much about it, but they see it and they can see how wonderful it is. And it's all about enjoying chess, to find your own happiness with chess. And for everyone, it, it's different. For me, mm. it has been lots of competing, but it, you can do it in lots of different ways. So I'm just very, very happy uh, to see how chess is growing globally and how many people really enjoy chess. It yeah. just makes me so, so happy. I could never have dreamt uh, about that anything like this would happen when I was a kid, that, what, that my passion would be so global and so popular all over the world. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I feel the same sometimes when I think about chess for me it was this little secret that I had that my friends at school didn't really know. And then now it's becoming this. So it's amazing. Well, mom, you're going to be playing as Gotham in just a few days. Mm -hmm. um, I guess one of the last things that I want to ask you is people have this idea of you being this very humble, calm person. But you've been saying in this interview that you have this competitive side in you, of course, which you have to have to achieve the level that you have in chess. What would you like to say to all the people that think that you're just very soft and humble? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, but it's, it's a little bit like, uh, um, uh, we always have these stereotypes. We see a person and we put this person and think that we know how this person is. But people always surprise us. Mm -hmm. uh, they are never like you expect them to mm. be. And I think that's so amazing. That's really so amazing that we all can surprise other people being differently. Mm. And I know, of course, anyone meeting me without knowing my background, they would never guess what I have been doing for such a long <laughs> time in my life, and that I'm still uh, is a person who competes. But it's like that. And uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I always love this. Uh, and that computer. is an inspiration to me, you know? Mm. I have always grown up with the fact that you can be the kindest, nicest, most humble person in the world, but still be the most aggressive and such a menace on the chessboard. And I've always been taught the person you are on the outside, you should always try to be this very nice person. You don't have to bring that to the chessboard. To the chessboard, you're playing a sport, you're competing. And you're the person that has inspired me to know that and to understand that in my life. So that is something that I'm very grateful for. Mm, oh, so nice to you. Yeah. Yes, chess is really um, a sport. We compete on the board. We fight very much, but we are friends before and we're friends and after. And we're friends what? after. Oh, and I think it's so symbolic, this. It's so nice we are shaking hands also before yeah. and after the game. This is just very, very nice. And also, lots of time when we when we have played the games, or also sometimes if we have time and energy, we go, we, we go to another room with our opponents and we analyze, we are giving our ideas mm -hmm. to the one we had been trying to beat just yes, some moments earlier. Yeah. And it's quite beautiful. We are sharing our ideas afterwards and we're learning from each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is very beautiful. And well, I'm so excited to see how it goes against Gotham Chess in a few days. I will, of course, be rooting for you. I am sorry, Gotham. Um, <laughs> I am very biased as your daughter, but it's going to be so, so, so much fun to see you face Gotham Chess, and I, I think that the match is going to be amazing. So do you have any last words for Gotham? <laughs> Imagine Gotham is watching this right now. Is there anything you would like to say? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> okay, I'll say it for her, for you. Be careful, Gotham. <laughs> PA is coming for you. Okay, I'll, I'll do it for you, Mom. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Mom. 
Pia, I'm not even sure what to call you, so I feel like in this interview. But thank you so much for sharing your thoughts and for joining. And I wish you so much good luck in a few days. I will be rooting for you the whole time. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>